So our data exercise so far has seen us gather some data, check its authenticity, and now we've got to structure it so that we can work with it in Excel. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just click anywhere in that table and then go and convert that table to text because I want to do some text processing, <clears throat> which is quite different to word processing. And you'll see why in a minute. I want to separate the text with tabs, which means that the structure of the data at the moment in columns is going to be turned into continuous data separated by tabs instead of a column. And I need to do that for a reason I'll go into in a minute or so. So once we've done that, it comes up like this, uh, straight text. And what's really helpful at this point in time is to turn on the little in show invisibles up the top here, the formatting marks. And if I click that, I get to see all these little bits of business that determine how the data are put together. So I can see these little arrows are tabs. This little backward facing P thing is a carriage return or a paragraph marker. And I can also see some other funny looking things. These things here is a, is a space. And this thing here is a hard or non-breaking space. Now, it's kind of interesting because what I'm looking for here is a pattern which will enable me to get rid of these flags because I don't want them. And you may also notice that some of the lines of data are separated with two paragraphs and some of them are separated with one. This is just one of the weird things that happens when you bring stuff in from um, the, a web page or a web table. Right, so what I'm going to do is just to go back to where I was. So I'm going to undo and go back to the tables. And the reason why I want to do that is that I think I can use this little thing here. Whoops. That's the other problem with this. It's got links in it. Everything's linked. So if you click on it, off you go to a web page. And that's a bit annoying if we want to be able to manipulate text because we'll accidentally click on things and it'll go off. Anyway, we'll, we'll fix that later on. But to separate the flag and the name of the country, there's that little round, that little circly thing. Now, that may come in handy because what I could do is to replace that with a tab character and that would give me the flags all in its own column when I convert it back to a table which is what we'll do after we've fiddled with the text so that we can, we can put the table into Excel. The problem is that over here we've got other little circles like that and that's going to cause some issues. So what I'm going to do is to undo and cake ourselves back to here. I'll just make that a little bit smaller so that we can see what's going on. There we go. And what am I interested in? I'm actually interested in this column here. That's the only column that I'm, that I'm interested in. Before we start manipulating the text, I'm going to get rid of things. And that will get rid of these little circly things here because the only circly things that we'll have, non-breaking spaces, are going to be between the flag and the name of the country. Okay, so uh, I've got all that there, so all selected. So what we can do now is to delete that column. Beauty, that's gone. Now we'll do the same thing here and delete those columns. Now we've got a little bit of a problem here because Ali is spread across two columns, which is a bit annoying. So what I'm going to do is to delete that cell and I'm going to, let's try shifting cells left and see what happens. There we go. Okay, well that's not too bad. And I'll delete those cells. And let's try the same thing. Beautiful, okay. So now we've just got country, a nominal US, and we've got these PPP things and whatnot. So let's uh, get rid of those. Uh, that's gonna be a bit interesting. Let's get rid of country as well. So let's delete that whole row. Ah, 
there we go beautiful and now we can get rid of these things here so I'm going to select those oh, we might want to keep the um, reference the date reference there it doesn't appear to have any of those little circly things so that's okay we'll probably keep that because that might be handy to refer back to later and uh, I'm now going to uh, right click and I'm going to right click thank you come on word and I'm going to delete those two columns so now I've got some quite nice structured data that has the country and then the US price, etc. In fact, we probably don't even need that whole thing, but we'll leave that in place for the moment. Now what I want to do is I want to fix these links. You notice that every time you go near the country name or the flag, or the country name anyway, it turns into a link so that I, if I click on that accidentally, I'm going to go into a world of pain because it's going to take me off onto a different website so I'm going to turn this back into just straight ordinary text and again I'm going to go up to the table here and convert it from table back into text I'm going to separate them by tabs as we've seen before and now we're set up and we're ready to take the next step you'll notice that here is that little non-breaking space so what I want to do is to replace all of those with a tab character. So that thing should give me the flags in one column, the country in another, the, price, the dollar price in US dollars per hour in another, and then when it was measured in the last one. And that's going to be pretty handy. So I need to do a, um, a pretty advanced search and replace. So Control H on Macs or uh, Windows will bring up a search and replace box over here on the right hand on the left hand side. And we can put in a word or whatever we want to find and replace, but we've also got a drop down here which enables us to change things. So down the bottom here we've got non-breaking spaces. So I want to change a non-breaking space. The code for that is caret S and what I'd like to change that into is a tab character. Okay, so let's see how we go. Let's do a replace all. They made 203 replacements and now we've got the little tab characters between the flag and the name of the country, you beauty. But we've still got this problem where we have two paragraph markers separating some and one paragraph marker separating the other. So that's going to give us some empty rows when we get it into Excel. But we can use exactly the same technique. We can say, take a paragraph mark, and wherever you see two of them, I'll have to type this in manually, Shift 6 and P, whenever you see two paragraph markers, I want you to replace it with one paragraph marker. Just move that to the right a little bit so you can see that a little bit more easily. So I'm going to take two paragraph markers and replace them with one. And I'm going to say replace all. And look at that. All fixed. You beauty. So now I'm going to click once more into here. Actually, I'll, I'll get rid of that nominal US dollar line. I think I'll get rid of the whole thing. I don't really need that for the moment. I will now select all, Control A on a PC, Command A on a Mac, and I'll go back up into my table menu and I will convert that text back into a table. And we want to separate that with tabs. And let's just see what that looks like. Look at that. Fantastic. Now we've got a few empty columns here, but that doesn't really matter. That's fine. Uh, I noticed that there's no value for Austria. Oh well, there you go. Um, just going to take a quick scroll through here and have a look and see that everything's behaving itself. And that certainly looks to be the case. We could scroll down to the bottom and see if there's any... No, it all looks good. Fantastic. Wait a minute, I saw some interesting stuff down the bottom here. What happened there? Aha. Uh -huh. Looks like Nepal has played up a bit. So I'm going to take uh, Nepal and copy it and put it over here and take that one and that one and put it back into the right place. It looks like it's just Nepal that's done that but we'll and we've still got those blessed links which we'll have to get rid of in a minute. Okay so I'm going to take Nepal and copy it or cut it 
and paste it in over here. Sometimes you need to do a little bit of manual labour uh, on a date of when you're cleaning it up. And if we were dealing with millions of records, there are more powerful tools than Word that we could use to do that. So it looks like it's just that. We'll just do a quick scan through to see if there are any others. Oh, there's a Switzerland. Typical of Switzerland. Okay, so we'll go and grab that. And it didn't have any data by the look of things. Um, we'll cut that out and pop that into there. Okay, so we might miss out on information about Switzerland. So there you go. Everything looks okay. Terrific. Right, so now we can click up the top here to select that entire column. And guess what? We're now able to delete that column and get rid of all the flags. Isn't that fantastic? Okay, one more thing to do is to get rid of all these links. So when you click over here, you've got links. Again, this has to be a text operation, straight text, without a tabular format. So before we go any further, I'll just get rid of these things here so that they're out of the road. Delete that column. Thank you very much. And now we have to invoke something which is quite special. Now this is not, it is documented on the Microsoft site, but how do I get rid of all of those links? Now I could go and select it carefully and then right click it and go down to link here and remove the link, but that's going to take a long time. We've got a computer, so let's make it do stuff for us a little bit more easily. So save you the hassle of going to find out where this is um, on Windows if you hold those keys down control shift and then press F9 which is the function key or on a Mac you might need to add the function command to it so that the F9 key doesn't do a fast forward on your keyboard but it, it does F9 stuff in Word so uh, let's put that window um, back to where it came from. Select all and we will do on, because I'm on a Mac, I'll do function command shift and press F9. Right, so now you'll notice Then I hover over the top of these things, it's no longer a link. Fantastic. Okay, select all, turn it back into a table. Strictly speaking, this isn't necessary because Excel will understand tab delimited text. I'm just doing this for the for the sake of it. So copy and now swap back to Excel. And the Excel document that uh, we want to work on is the one that has the Big Mac pricing in it. We came from the previous block. But before I paste stuff in, I'm going to paste it into a separate sheet. And I'll just call this uh, minimum wage. Uh, click in row two because I want to put labels up the top here to help me and paste. Again, it's a fairly large data set. Might take a minute. There it goes. So now we can put in a, a header for, uh, for this at the top. Uh, we can say that that's country. And this is the uh, US dollar uh, per hour. And then here is uh, when that data was collected, if we need to refer back to that at some stage later. Let's select all three of those and double click the little division between them. You'll notice that the cursor changes shape and that will automatically size the, um, the things for the contents. Sometimes that doesn't quite work properly. So Bosnia and Herzegovina, for argument's sake, there we go, that's a bit better. We'll just do that one manually. Okay, so now we've got every single uh, country um, listed and where possible we've got their minimum wage. Great. So what to do with that? Because back here we have got all the countries. Now they're not all countries in the world as we saw on the map. So which countries are here and which countries are here and how do I get them to line up? is going to be a pain in the neck if I do that manually. But again, we've got a computer. So let's do something computery. And that's what we'll do in the next video where we'll finish this task.